We're going to start with our Word document template. This is a notice of appearance. It's a sample that I had. Obviously, I don't represent John Bon Jovi against Raleigh's Hamburgers, but it's a good one pager to get started. The first thing I like to do is look for variables, uh, things like the county, uh, the judicial circuit. Those don't change document to document, whereas the plaintiff's name, the defendant's name, things like case number, division, those all change document to document, and we want DocuSymbol to handle those. The way DocuSymbol handles variables and inserting them into the document is with curly braces. So we need to let DocuSymbol know where to insert the variables in our documents. We're going to start with plaintiff name, put in double curly braces and close them out, and then put in our variable name that we're going to use in the, docu in the DocuSymbol interview. You see that I use underscores just for the sake of clarity so it looks nice when I read it and I can tell where everything is. It's one way to do it. You can do it all as one word. You just can't have spaces in your variable names because DocuSymbol won't be able to handle those. So let's look for any other variables that we want it to assign. The plaintiff's name again, we want to put that as the same variable we put up at the top and it will insert it in both places. On the certificate of service, uh, we want it to insert the day and the month uh, so that that changes as well. It lessens what we have to do when we actually have the completed document and makes life a lot easier. So now that we've put in our variables, the next thing that we're going to do is save our document as a Word document so that we can upload it to DocuSymbol as a template file. That will let DocuSymbol uh, start with the document as the foundation. So now that we've got our notice of appearance done, let's go over to upload it to DocuSymbol. Under the template section, uh, just browse to it and select it to upload it. Go ahead and click upload. And you'll see that it loads under the existing template files. So now it's usable for all of our DocuSymbol interviews. Go back to the playground and we're going to create a new YAML file so that we can start a new interview. Let's call it sample NOA. Remember to put the .yaml extension, otherwise DocuSymbol will freak out. We don't have any code in there, and if you try and save it, uh, it's going to freak out on you. So let's go ahead and put in an endpoint. I like to use the example blocks just because it's handy. Uh, go down to using a docx template, and you can just click the insert button, and it puts it right into your code window. We want to make sure that this is mandatory because DocuSymbol always looks for a mandatory endpoint um, to complete the interview. Uh, you'll see we saved it, now it's got a syntax error, but let's go ahead and put in the template file that we need. You'll see it shows up on the right hand side, and just click it to insert it, and go ahead and save it. Now that we've saved it and we have our template file, you'll see that all of the variables we define in our template file show up under undefined names. This is really handy because it tells us what variables we need to define in our interview and lets us create our questions around that. So let's go ahead and get started authoring the questions. Uh, you'll see I uh, just started with question, colon, what is the plaintiff's name? Now, because I made the plaintiff's name possessive, and use a single quote there, it's going to look to close it out. So let's just go ahead and put it in um, double quotes and that'll take care of that. We'll put in our fields. We don't need a label for this, so just use no label and no label will show up. And then we need to put our variable name in there that, that we want the question to define. Okay, we've got our first question done. Now let's get to the defendant's name. Uh, same format, what is the defendant's name? Again, you know, you'll see it turns the text red because I've got a single quote in there. Let's go ahead and enclose it in double quotes. Just remember that if you're using a possessive or single quote, that you need to enclose it in quotation marks. This is a carryover from um, Python and other programming languages where it looks to close out quotation marks as part of a programming syntax. So just remember that that's going to happen. And if you see the text turns, turn red when you use a possessive, that's why. So let's keep putting in our questions here. Um, we've got the defendant's name. Now we need the case number. Uh, same format. It's really not uh, difficult to um, just copy and paste these. I'm typing them um, because I like to do things the hard way, apparently. So now we've got our case number. And you'll see how I'm separating each question block with the three hyphens. This tells DocuSymbol that it's one discrete unit of code in there. You can add more fields to a question. I'm doing this uh, just with one field per question to show 
a way that you can do it. Theoretically, you could make one question and ask, you know, what is the defendant's name, what is the plaintiff's name, what is the case number, and put in each field in the same question. Uh, but we can do it this way as well. Let's go ahead and put in the current month and day. And in this one, we can put in both variables so that uh, we don't have to have separate questions for them. This is one of the questions where it just makes sense to have everything in one question. Uh, instead of no label, let's put in a label for day, just so we don't get ourselves confused. So put in the variable name, and then another field for month. You see how I'm separating the label from the variable with a colon. Now that we've got everything defined, let's go ahead and go down to save and see what happens. Do our undefined names go away? Do, 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 do. Yay, they went away. Okay, let's do save and run and see what happens. Okay, it's still loading for us. Um, so there's our interview. What is the plaintiff's name? Let's say Mr. Plaintiff. Go ahead and put that in. It's thinking. Still thinking. And still thinking. Okay, what is the case number? 12CA. This is the way we do case numbers in Podunk, Florida. We'll put in the case division as well. Let's say it's in Division F. Defendant's name, let's say Mr. Defendant. He's always getting in trouble. And the current month and day, we'll put uh, day is 5, month is June. And hit continue and see what happens. Okay, here's our document. It's assembled everything. It's gotten all the variables. And you'll see we can do it as a PDF and just open it in the browser. And there's our notice of appearance. You'll see that it's got everything we put in filled in for us. It looks really nice. Uh, Mr. Plaintiff is named in both places this 5 day of June 2019. So our interview is pretty much complete. Uh, so what we want to do next is go ahead and make it available to use outside of the playground. To do that, we've got to go to the Packages section and create a new package that we can save and install. I've named it the package sample in a way. Let's put my author's name as Sam Harden, email, and a description of what we've been doing, a sample. And you'll see down here dependencies. These are all Python packages uh, that are basically sections of Python that you can use. We don't need to worry about those right now. We want to select our interview file, the one that we've been working on, as well as our template file to make it part of this interview. Let's do our readme file uh, just to say what this thing is. Hey, this is a sample in a way. And once we've got that, we'll go down to save. Now we're not done when we hit saved. You'll see the green box at the top. The package information was saved. But after we save it, we also need to install it. So let's go down. Now we have the green install button and we'll go ahead and install it. And once it updates everything and installs, the interview package, then it can be used outside the playground by any person coming to the docassymbol instance that we've got running. So let's wait a moment for it to update. Docassymbol is a very big program, so it does take it a little while. Okay, we didn't get an error, and uh, if you're interested in pip logs, then you can read that. Otherwise, just hit return. Now that we've got our package updated, let's talk about the formatting for a docassymbol URL. Um, you'll see it's pretty long. It starts with our root domain. Um, this is what I work from. And then it's got uh, two instances, the name of our package, sample NOA, uh, colon data, and then the name of the YAML file, sample NOA.yaml. Now, one of the things I do, I'm not sure if it's good practice or not, is I always try and name the package the same as the YAML file, and that way I don't confuse myself. I'm not very bright, and it took me a while to figure out what the domain should be, so I've come up with this naming convention. Let's open an incognito window and put in our, our URL. You'll see, again, uh, sample NOA data sample NOA.yaml. And once we hit go, uh, there's our interview. It's accessible by anyone. Uh, if you put that into your browser, you would see the same interview. And it's asking us all the same questions again. What is the case number, case division, defendant's name, Mr. Defendant, 
and current month and day, and let's see if it does the same thing and produces our document. Well, here it is. Uh, we've got PDF and Word document, and it looks pretty much the same that it did when we ran it in the playground. So we should be pretty happy with our interview. We're creating our document, and it's working pretty smoothly. Now, it's got some parts that are left over because we're rushing through this. Uh, the question, does it meet your approval, is still there. It doesn't do really anything. So let's go ahead and start by taking out some of the garbage that we left in and making our interview better. So we'll go ahead and delete uh, that question and look at um, how we can format our other questions to make the interview better and more simple for people that are completing it. Uh, when we had day and month, um, day, uh, we ideally want to be a number and not a word. So we're going to put in data type integer. That means the user is restricted in what they can put in to just a number without a decimal place. So we can't have day 1.5. For month, we're going to make some choices. Uh, we'll put in the months so that nobody misspells anything or puts in a weird month or whatever. So we're going to list our choices out as the months of the year. You'll see how I'm listing each month with a hyphen in front of it under choices. This creates a pull down menu in the interview, and so it's really easy for the user to use that. And again, the benefit of uh, making our questions in this way is that we're putting the user on rails. So they can't put in something weird. They can't put in something that doesn't work. They have to put in the day as a number. They have to choose the month of the year. And it just creates better documents and better interviews. So now let's save it and um, see if we messed anything up. Doesn't look like it. And now that we've got that done, let's go to save and run and see what happens uh, with our new formatted interview. We'll put in all the same stuff we put in before, division F. Uh, we'll put in some gobbledygook for the defendant's name. Um, it's a new uh, kind of thing there. And then we'll see the day is now a number. Um, we can increase it with these little arrows up and down. If we put in a letter like E, it'll throw an error. You have to enter, an, enter a number. So let's put in July for the month and hit continue and see what happens. And look, the last question is gone that we didn't want. Uh, we still have our document and it looks the same. We format our, formatted our questions uh, differently, but our document is pretty much the same. So I think we should be pretty happy with that. Um, We'll go back to our playground and uh, repackage the interview so that it updates the public version of it. We'll change the version number again, and we got to go down, make sure everything's still selected, and hit save. And then once that's saved, we need to hit install again. And this will update the public version of the interview. So if you go to that URL that we talked about before, you'll get the updated interview once this updates. So I think we should be happy with our little interview that we created and our sample in a way. You can see how quick and easy it is to automate documents with DocAssemble. So let's talk about some of the takeaways from the video and things I think that are important when you're creating DocAssemble interviews. One, I always start with the document. You saw how it made life easy by defining the variables that we had to use. Uh, use simple interview questions. Um, don't make them huge. Don't use a ton of variables in a question. It just makes life easy. It's okay to try one way and then improve it. Um, you saw how our first interview, it worked, but we had to go back and edit it and take some of the garbage out. That's fine. That's what a playground is for. And the final takeaway is, look, if I can do it, I'm not very bright. You can do it. It's not that hard. DocAssemble is a great platform that you can use even if you don't have a ton of technical expertise.